Hi, I'm Sarah Hayes and I'm talking to you today from University of Alaska Fairbanks on how to write a successful GSA grant proposal. We talked uh, at, the, at the workshop about all the different pieces of the, of the proposal, the GSA proposal, but the one that I'm most interested in and the one that I'm going to be talking to you about today is the PD is the figure. And the reason that the figure is so close to my heart is that figures are really worth a lot of words and they can really help you make the point that you want to make in your proposal. So a good figure will really help you explain your research question um, and starting this year your GSA proposal must contain a figure. I think this is a great opportunity. Um, it is in, it's, it's required to be in a PDF format, no larger than five megabytes, but this is really cool because you can build a figure in, a multi-part figure in PowerPoint or in Adobe Illustrator, and you can use that, um, and then you can convert that to a PDF format. So this can be, uh, it doesn't have to be a simple figure, it can be a whatever you want. It basically is limited only by your imagination and your ability. Okay. This is a great opportunity, so don't just copy and paste a figure from your advisor's grant proposal or a publication. Make it specifically for this study so that you can really, uh, so that it's really focusing on helping you explain what you want to do uh, with, with your, in your GSA proposal. And it minimizes clutter, it makes it more, it's likely to make it more readable, all of that. So you might be thinking, well, what kind of figure might I, might I put together? Well, I think it depends on what the purpose of your figure is. Is your is the purpose of your figure to help you explain something that would otherwise take a lot of text, um, some complexity? Is it, it would it be most helpful to have some kind of conceptual model over of what you're trying to test or some way to, to show competing models? Um, do you want to use it to highlight the impact of your research? Um, I do some research that is health related and so I might want to uh, illustrate to people who maybe don't live in the arid southwest why it, why dust transport of contaminated particles is really important in that type of environment. So then after you sort of decided what you think the purpose of your figure is going to be then you might consider what kind of figure might be most appropriate. Is it going to be a picture? Is it going to be a map? Is it going to be a conceptual model? Is it going to be a normal figure, a graph of some kind? Is it going to be a flow chart of your research plan? Well the answer could be more than one of those things. And let's take a look at some examples. Um, we'll, take a, we'll take a look at some examples in a minute. Um, a good figure really does help you explain your research question, so it takes time to build your figure and refine it. You might need a title to orient your audience to what you're trying to do with the figure. You, of course, need the figure meet itself. Um, and I would like to see a caption on every figure this year. Um, it really helps to have legends or scale bars so I can easily understand what, uh, what you're trying to tell me. Um, also, you can annotate key, key points of the figure to, to help me focus in on what's important as a reviewer. I have many of these to read um, in a relatively short time scale, so really help me, help your reviewer do a good job. And the way you do that is by making your figure easy to interpret. Make sure I can read all the text. Build your figure and then print it out. If you can't see it on the printout, I can't see it on the screen. Uh, make it visually appealing. Make it easy for me to understand what you're trying to say. Um, and then it really helps if you can use colors to make understanding your figure intuitive. Like, don't go crazy. It's not Mardi Gras. But, you know, using uh, using colors in a, in a creative and um, helpful way can really help you uh, make your point. Um, making it, making the text easy to read and using colors is something that wouldn't necessarily follow if you're just copying and pasting from your advisor's grant proposal or a, a paper that are often meant to be read in black and white. So let's look at some examples. Um, this is a, <laughs> this is a figure that has a title. <laughs> um, all of these are my own figures, so uh, I feel pretty comfortable poking fun at myself um, for a couple of these. So this uh, is x-ray diffraction, looking at mineral, mineralogy of uh, mine tailings as a function of depth. Um, you could read all the text, uh, but maybe it's not so easy to interpret uh, unless you really were intimately involved with this, with this study. Um, it would take some time. 
So maybe instead you might want to look at mineral trans, you might want to add, a, add some colors to help guide me. Like see, I can see that the red bars are increasing uh, down, the, down the page from A to F. I can see that the, that the green bars are decreasing um, to almost non-existence and I can see the same thing with the orange and, and the blue. So uh, it really does help me, colors can really help me in this example um, to understand the figure. I also added a figure caption. I used colors and bolding in the, in the figure caption to help, under, to help guide the reader and to what's important in this figure. So here's another picture, uh, or here's, a, here's another example. This is a picture, um, but maybe, maybe not as effective as it could be. Um, I see that there's something going on here. There's probably something really important because there's people covering their heads, there's dust, um, the people are in respirator and Tyvek suits, so something's going on. Well, I think that maybe a more effective figure would be um, one that has multiple parts. So. You can see that this is a, mine ta a large mine tailings pile in central Arizona. You can see that there's a health component because you have people uh, in Tyvek suits and respirators that are covering their face as the wind is blowing these uh, metal-laden particles. Uh, you can also see that the mineralogy is changing s dramatically as a function of depth, um, which, is all, which are all things that I've talked about in the figure caption as well as in my proposal. So keep in mind that we can see that when we're reviewing, we can only see the figure cap, or the figure or the proposal. We can't see both at the same time, and so that's something to keep in mind when you're uh, generating your figure. Make it so that it stands alone, and I don't have to really remember what I was just reading about in order to understand your figure. So here's another example. Uh, these are micro X-ray fluorescence maps. You may or may not be familiar with them, but regardless, like there's a scale bar. You can see this is a relatively coarse uh, scan. You know, maybe uh, a centimeter by two centimeters. Uh, they're different enter. They're different elements. And so here we're actually looking at elemental spatial correlations, um, looking at tellurium as it's uh, extracted uh, from a uh, from copper mining. Actually, um, another. Uh, scale bar that I have is uh, to help you interpret these XRF maps where you have low brown being low counts, uh, green being high counts, and I've also left nothing really up to the imagination by having these correlation plots where you can see the R squared values um, for these uh, different elements being correlated with tellurium. Uh, another example, uh, looking at some historic gold mine tailings in central Nevada. Here I actually do have a scale bar on the, on the state map, um, although maybe it's a little bit hard to tell the scale on part B, the photo. You can see that there are definitely physical and chemical differences between the, um, the two different tailings piles. You can also see different vegeta vegetative covers, um, although they're sparse and non-existent. <laughs> Um, relative to maybe some of the hills in the background that are quite um, densely uh, vegetated, you can also see as a uh, the the tailings pile or the a pit that was dug in the ta in this tailings pile. Um, so you can see as a function of depth that there's not as dramatic as a couple of examples ago, but still um, you can see some differences. So this is um, another example title, nice title, scale bar, a nice multi-part figure. So another example that I don't actually like quite as much um, are, is looking at the tellurium speciation at that same Delamar site. Um, so this is basically generating, what I do like about this figure is that it generates sort of a question because you have the thermodynamic modeling uh, that predicts a tellurium plus four state and then you have some field data that suggests that it's a plus six state. So what's right? Why, why is there this, this discrepancy between the model and the and the um, field observations. So one thing, another thing that I do really like about this is that I'm using data from a different paper that's already been, that, a published paper, so I cited it in the figure caption, and that's exactly what you should be doing um, if you are using someone else's data. Um, okay, so uh, 
Another example is a conceptual model. You can see the conceptual model for efflorescent salt formation where you have uh, wetting, uh, when you have a wetting cycle, when you have precipitation coming into these uh, mine tailings, you have dissolution of the ion and, and uh, ions going into the pore water. When you have a drying cycle, you have these being these pore waters being wicked up to the surface and evaporating and that supersaturates solutions with respect to these efflorescent salts, which are then vulnerable to uh, redissolution re during wetting. And I talk about that in the figure caption as well. So one of the things that you may be thinking is, but I don't have any data yet. I'm just starting. And I've given you, or I've shown you some examples of projects that I've been working on for several years. Um, so here's some suggestions. You can modify a figure. Pick an important paper. Pick your favorite figure out of an important paper and modify it. Um, you can pick a figure out of uh, your advisor's grant proposal, um, but be, make sure that that you cite where the figure, where the data, uh, where the information is coming from. Um, that's really very critical. And you know, spice it up. Make it just for this proposal. Give it a title. Give it a nice title. Give it a um, a nice figure caption explaining, annotate it, say right here, this is the important part, look right there. Um, that is all very helpful for reviewers. Um, so that's pretty much all I have. Um, but please get inspired, make a good figure, um, try something creative. This is the time to do it. And um, best of luck on your grant proposals.